Okay, here we are back at camp after gaining Shale, who is standing a pretty good ways away from the camp, probably because of the incredible social person that he is. Now, um, one thing I forgot to mention uh, after the previous quest is that more people start showing up in your uh, camp for every uh, ally you're able to recruit. In this case, we've just recruited the elves uh, in Chapter 5, so here is Emissary Caron. You witnessed the rarest of things, Warden. The Dalish stand ready to defend Ferelden. Do you need anything? We have assembled on a short schedule. Certain factors of equipment could be better. Crafting components would serve best. Basic ones like elf root and deep mushroom. At your word, Warden. So will your men commit to my cause? I would not insult them by asking. Word was given, and that is all that needs to be said. Very well. Alright, so <clears throat> you'll notice that this general area over here will start to fill up with more and more representatives and emissaries as we get more allies. And the, before we uh, do our usual interviews of our new companions, as well as see if the older ones have anything new to say, um, since we're going to Orzammar, I figured it would be appropriate to see if we could uh, get any more information from Bodan, our uh, faithful merchant who's been following us around. If there's anything I can do for you, please, please, tell me. So what's your story, exactly? Hmm. I suppose since you told me about you being a Grey Warden, it's only fitting for me to be as open. I am originally from Orzammar, the famed dwarven city that lies beneath the stately Frostback Mountains. I was a merchant there, too. Merchant caste. These things are in the blood, you know. You can't just leave them behind. I ran a fairly successful business. Rare artifacts, you know. Old things, grand things. The nobles loved them. Reminded them of the lost glory days, I suppose. So why did you leave? One day, a noble woman came to my store. She looked around for a bit and then started shrieking in dismay. Apparently, she believed that a pair of braces I had for sale once belonged to her brother. He'd been lost in a cave-in, you see, while on an expedition to clear out the darkspawn from one of the tunnels running close to the city. They were made specially for him. They're unique, she shrieked. He stole them from my poor brother's corpse. She had me arrested on the spot, of course. Nobles, they're touchy like that. Well, did you steal them? Well, I didn't steal them. You see, I, I'd been paying these castless thugs to venture out into the deep roads for me. The lost tigs. Th they're full of things that people left behind. Sometimes you can find a treasure. Something worth a little gold. Well, I guess better to do something with them than to just leave them rot. That's exactly how I see it. The noble woman, she wasn't too happy with the theft of her brother's braces. I don't know what they planned for me, and I didn't want to find out. Bribed the guard that was watching me and took off for the surface first opportunity I got. Never looked back. And now here you are. Yes, here I am. Now, is there anything the boy or I can get you? You didn't mention your son in your tale. Ah, yes. I'm married to a fine woman back in Denerim, it's true. She'd give me a son if she could, but uh, that's not likely to ever be. Sandal here. I found him in the deep roads years ago. Abandoned, I think. And he was never quite right in the head. I took him in, and I brought him with me when I came here to the surface. It may not be my blood, true. But I think of him as one. We left Orzammar. That's right, boy. Maybe one day we'll see it again. Oh, yeah. In many ways, blood isn't all that important. That's how I've always felt. As long as he's happy, so am I. 
It's not as if I don't benefit, mind you. Turns out the boy's a natural working with enchantments. He might have even been leery maddled. I never thought of that before, to be honest. Happens sometimes. He can work an enchantment into just about anything, however, given some time. Could probably open his own shop, if he knew how. Enchantment. <laughs> well, he does seem to enjoy it, at least. So where do these goods that you sell come from? Not the deep roads. Look, we... We don't rob people, all right? We don't take things from people that need them. The things in the law's tags, what good did they do lying there? I brought them back to Orzammar, where people could look at them and remember. It's not all that different up here. There are places long abandoned by the humans everywhere. Even more now with the Darkspawn coming. What do you mean? People flee from the Blight with good reason, but they forget things. Things with value and meaning. They leave them behind because they're frightened and desperate. And sometimes, my boy and I, we find our way to these places before the Horde descends, and we save these things. I take them away so the Darkspawn don't get them. Is that so bad? They destroy everything they touch. Well, I'm certain it's better than having the Darkspawn take it all. That's what I tell myself, too. Ah, these are dark times indeed. Dark times, my friend. Well, very well. I should go. Of course. Good fortune to you and yours. Goodbye. So there's Bodan and Sandal's story. Simple to the point with just a little bit of drama here and there. Although I suppose leaving your home behind forever is pretty significant. We should know. Okay, so, next we shall talk to our newcomers. So let's do Zevron first. As you can see, his ch epic cheese knife is crackling with electricity. That's because um, off-camera I went ahead and put an en had a sandal, actually, put an enchantment on it, since I did have some spare runes. And at the moment, this is the only weapon the party's carrying that can... Uh, handle enchanting runes, but uh, I should be able to fix that in the quests ahead. But it's nice because depending on the type of rune, you'll get a different effect over the weapon as it's uh, once it's applied. So what's happening, Zevron? Here I am. There you are. Care to answer some questions? Oh, this should be good. Go ahead. So, why did you want to leave the crows exactly? Well, now, I imagine that's a very fair question. Being an assassin, after all, is a, a living, at least as far as such things go. I was simply never given the opportunity to choose another way. So, if that choice presents itself, why should I not seize upon it? But what would you rather do? Now that you mention it, I am not entirely certain. I was but a boy of seven when I was purchased, for three sovereigns, I'm told, which is a good price, considering I was all ribs and bone and didn't know the pommel of a dagger from the pointy end. The crows buy all their assassins that way, buy them young, raise them to know nothing else but murder, and if you do poorly in your training, you die. And that system works? Of course. You compete against your fellow assassins, and those who survive are rightfully proud of it. In Antiva, being a crow gets you respect. It gets you wealth. Gets you women. And men. Or whatever it is you might fancy. But that does not mean doing what is expected of you always. And it means being expendable. It's a cage, if a gilded cage. Pretty, but confining. Uh, we know about gilded cages growing up in the circle. 